What up guys, Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today we are continuing our series on the hero's journey. Specifically, we're talking about the initiation phase, which is the second phase after the hero has left their normal world and is along the road of trials. Today, in particular, what we're going to touch on is called apotheosis. Now, that's a really big word, and many of you, if you're like me, have never heard of it before and have no idea what it means. So, today, let's explore what that means. Apotheosis, simply put, is when your hero experiences or has become reached, it's when your hero has reached this fully developed state to where they're almost godlike or divine. They've been elevated to the godlike state. And in this state, they're, they're most powerful. Now, in many stories, now let, let's talk about this for a little bit. If we look at Joseph Campbell's work, he talks about apotheosis and he kind of gives, you know, like these are the, the general, I don't want to say guidelines, but this is the steps, these are the steps that the hero goes through before he gets to apotheosis. Now, in a story, there is no template, so to speak, about what goes where specifically. A lot of the steps on the road of trials or in any part of the monomyth can be interchanged dependent on the needs of the story. However, from what I've seen in all of my studies, apotheosis normally takes place close to or around two particular other steps, which is the dragon battle, also known as the crisis or the central ordeal, and the atonement with the Father. Now, we're not going to talk about those. There are other videos about those two steps, but the reason why this is important, let me explain, is that in most narratives, what we see is that the hero goes against the, the central ordeal, the dragon battle. And in that battle, they end up facing one of the most powerful opponents in the story or powerful forces in the story. It doesn't necessarily have to be an entity. And when they do that, in order to defeat that opponent, they have to sacrifice in some manner, shape, or form. And when they do, what happens is they end up obtaining this godlike status. They, they become more than themselves, even if it's only for just a momentary second. So for example, I'm going to go, go to a couple different stories and kind of explain so you get an idea. If we look at Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, we see that Thorin and his crew and, and Bilbo, they're all terrified of the dragon. And although they want to take the mountain back, nobody wants to fight the dragon. But at some point in the story, they eventually get there where they're looking for the Arkenstone and the dragon is, is chasing after them, trying to get them. And Thorne comes up with this idea to use the smelting pots to basically melt the gold over the dragon in a hope to kill the dragon. And so they all sacrifice themselves in one manner, shape, or form in order to, to deceive the dragon and let their plan take form. And in that moment when they are, some of them are distracting the dragon, some of them are, 
getting the smelting things ready. And Thorn in particular is sort is the main distraction getting getting the dragon to focus on him. He's sacrificing himself and he's becoming more than himself. And it, and in a, in a very brief moment, he's become somewhat divine in the sense that he's not running from the dragon anymore. He's not afraid of it. He's facing it head on. And he is going to, it, it, it makes them mano a mano, right? They're, they're on equal ground. And even though the dragon is far superior in strength, the Thorin outwits it, so to speak. The same thing holds true when their plan fails and then the dragon flies to the city of Dale. Everybody in Dale is running and fearful and everything like that. And the fisherman, you, you'll have to excuse me, I've forgotten his name. It's been a while since I've seen the movie or read the book. Uh, the fisherman sacrifices himself by taking the black arrow of his grandfather or something like that and he and his son, in, in a last Hail Mary attempt, use this makeshift crossbow to kill the dragon. And it's right at the moment that the dragon was about to basically destroy them that they, that they ended up defeating the dragon. And that's because they, they sacrificed themselves. And so we see a lot of times in a lot of these dragon battles where the hero must, in order to reach that, define, that divine state of apotheosis, where they can shoot that arrow in the most specific spot to destroy the dragon, where the chink in his, his scales are, or like Thorin, to, to do all of these dynamic things and get his team in place and, and everything to deceive the dragon. All of those things like require a perfect storm and in order to hit that kind of divine state, they must sacrifice themselves. So we see this theme of sacrificing a lot with apotheosis. And what you'll see again is that, as I've mentioned before, the dragon battle is sort of like a pop quiz for the final test. It prepares you for that final climactic moment where the hero has to fulfill the 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 journey and almost nine times out of ten there's some form of sacrifice there where the hero then is reborn and so when we go back to apotheosis this is the first time that the hero has really touched this divinity this divine quality in himself and he experiences it for the first time and he may destroy or defeat the dragon initially, but he's unable to control the divine power. He can't replicate it. He can't do it again and again. If we look at the Matrix, Neo is a perfect example of this, where once he starts learning about the Matrix and, and doing all of his stuff, we see that he actually can manipulate the Matrix in ways that no one else can. He's, he's far more powerful. And so it's he's reached this divine state, but he still does not have control over it. And that's what apotheosis is. It's this first taste of not just death and sacrifice, sometimes of their team or sometimes of the opponent, but also of this divine power and how to use it and how to get used to it. And so from the time of that ordeal, that central ordeal or dragon battle, to the time of the climactic moment, as the story progresses, your hero should become more and more familiar or comfortable with that divine power that they've received. Another good example would be Luke Skywalker in the, the original Star Wars trilogy. If you want to look at it as a whole, he, he starts off his journey with Obi-Wan and each movie has its own central ordeal. But when Obi-Wan is, is defeated by Luke Skywalker, I, 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 let me take that back. 
when Obi-Wan sacrifices himself in front of Luke Skywalker to let Vader take him down, that's sort of the point where Luke Skywalker has to then take the journey on to himself. But between that time and several other moments, like when Luke Skywalker then faces Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back, and then all the way up until the second confrontation where the Emperor is there as well, all of those steps, Skywalker is becoming more and more in tune with the Force, which is, in Star Wars is representative of this divine state. And so the more and more he becomes in tune with it, the more and more each time he goes to battle, he is able to control that apotheosis state. And interestingly enough, if we look at the tril trilogy as a whole, what we see is that Darth Vader, or Anakin Skywalker, is actually the, the hero here. And what, what happens is his moment, his true moment of apotheosis is when he confronts Luke for the first time. And although it's very subtle and, and hard to tell, he does not destroy Luke. He, he realizes that there's some good left within him. And throughout the time between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, where those two confrontations take place, this has been weighing on Vader for quite a long time. All of the remnants of his previous life as Anakin Skywalker and Padme, and he now he has children and being a Jedi and standing for something more than himself. And so at the end, he sacrifices himself um, to defeat the Emperor. And more importantly, what we see is that he's been gradually becoming more and more in tune with his old self, that divine, and that is a story of redemption. So with the story of redemption, that divine state is going to be coming back to your roots, coming back to your old self, the good self, whatever that might be. In other stories where the theme, is, for example, for Luke, the story is more about trust your instincts. So if you look at the first Star Wars, A New Hope, by the, after Obi-Wan dies, it's on Luke to take his training and then use it to defeat the Death Star. And at the very end, when Luke decides to remove his targeting mechanism and trust himself and use the Force, that's a moment where he then touches the divine again, and reaches an apotheosis state. So, pardon me, I have hair in my mouth. Uh, so, there, that, that is apotheosis, and we can see it time and time again in so many different movies. A lot of times this will happen too, as I said before, during the dragon battle, someone who is close to the hero, or maybe even the villain, might die. And for various reasons, depending on the story, this will drive the hero either out of anger or rage or, or perhaps victory. It will drive the hero to a state of divinity where he can then vanquish whatever other obstacles are in their way so that, they can, so that the team can progress along the journey. And... This also, a lot of times, will set the story up for the rescue from without step, which will be spoken about in another video, but the long and the short of it is, once the hero hits this divine state, they, they normally, they're so powerful for a brief second that they're able to defeat whatever the, the, the problem is. But then after that, they're in a huge state of vulnerability or maybe they've used all their power, or all their power has been taken from them. And because of that, they have to be rescued by a friend, an ally, maybe even some sort of, not necessarily enemy, but a rival, in order to return to safety. 
So we'll discuss that in another video. But in a nutshell, that is apotheosis. If you guys have any questions about this, go ahead and leave them in the in the in the <laughs> discussion blocks below. And if you like the video, go ahead and give me a, a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you will hear all of these videos as they come out. But until next time, take it easy.